I'm Dr. Dana Fight, and I'm talking to you from Pittman Animal Hospital in Pittman, New Jersey. And today we're going to talk about how to use a ferminator, how to ferminate your pet. Um, my spokes model here is beautiful Perry, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, and he's going to help me demonstrate how to ferminate. The, this is the ferminator. It is a little plastic and metal tool. It comes in different sizes, and it is used to help pull the unwanted um, loose hairs out of the coat. Um, they come in different sizes. Any available pharmacy pet extension 10? Any available pharmacy pet They come in different sizes. This one would be best for a cat. This one would be best for a large dog. This one is what I'm going to use for Perry today since he's a medium sized dog. Uh, the way the Ferminator works is it's got a long row of small tines, very small tines. I don't know if you can see this, but they are not sharp at the tips. That's why I'm able to run my finger over it, but they're sharp on the insides in between the blades. And what that does is that allows us to pull the shed loose uh, dead hairs out of the coat. And um, you might think your pet sheds all the time, and believe it or not, a lot of dogs do. Uh, they shed more in the spring and more in the fall, but they do shed all year round. And so a good way to get rid of some of that unwanted hair all at once, rather than all over your kitchen floor, is to use a Ferminator. And I said I was going to use the medium one here. I'm using large, but Perry's putting up with it like a good sport. Um, he's wearing his beautiful red gentle leader head collar today because it has a calming effect on him and it makes a nice little handle if I need to grab him and reposition him while we're going. Um, one of the first things to say about using the Ferminator is long, slow, gentle strokes. You want to watch out for the bony parts of the body. Uh, watch out for hips, watch out for spine, shoulders. Uh, the belly you would probably do last, if at all, depending on your particular pet's temperament and tolerance for this. And of course you want to start with short sessions first uh, and work your way up to a longer session. Um, one thing you'll notice is the first few strokes that you do don't seem like they're pulling much hair out, but if you keep at it and keep going over and over, kind of the same pattern, before long you're going to see that a lot of loose hair is coming out. Now Perry had a bath not too long ago, so he did lose a lot of his loose hair the other day but we're still getting lots of hair out of here. And you can see how much is getting caught in the Ferminator right there. That's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the beginning. And a lot of it is here, so we'll pull that off. This is best done, in my opinion, outdoors on a windy day, um, because that way, you know, of course, you have to have good control over your pet, and I don't know that I necessarily recommend taking your cat outdoors if it's not used to being outside, unless you have it on a good leash and harness. Um, <clears throat> but if you, if you safely can, a good place to do this is outdoors on a windy day because it does have a tendency to stick to itself and clump up um, and you'd rather have it get blown away than be all over your clothes or all over your house. So I'm getting more and more hair out of here. On dry days like today, is it's mid-February in New Jersey, so you can hear almost a, like a static click at the end of each stroke. You can see how much static, good boy, how much static is generated. Um, that's, that's normal. It doesn't seem to bother Perry much at all. Yeah, you're getting into it, aren't you? Do you like it? Do you like it? He really likes having his neck done, so I'm going to do that a little bit next. So we're getting globs of hair out of here. In the spring or the fall, it's amazing how much hair you can get out of his coat. I do his tail a little bit too at the end because it's very fluffy. Good boy. You like that, huh? Let's get your neck Yeah. I took his neck collar off to facilitate this. And I'm starting just gentle and lightly, and as you make more, it's like combing long hair. As you make more passes, you're able to go a little bit deeper and a little bit harder. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Doing his neck is pretty rewarding because it's pretty hairy. Good boy, Perry. I'm going to switch to the medium now, I think. Oh, there's that static. There's that static. Okay. So, it's a pretty straightforward process. You're just... Starting out slow, long strokes when possible. Watch out for the bony 